Hi, this is Coach Van Tassel with my football mentor. We're going to talk about how to start and how to stop as a wide receiver. Because if you can't do that, you can't play the position. Football is about change of direction and timing. Yeah, I might be able to get open running vertically down the field eventually by quite a lot. But quarterback sacked. This drill can apply to comebacks as well as curls. Those are probably, you can shorten it up and apply it to the hitch as well. So we want to sell when we're running a comeback, we want to sell that face. So we want to get that DB running. But then we need to be able to break down and come to a stop and change directions in as few steps as possible. The good guys in the NFL will break down in three steps or two yards. Driving off my inside foot, so it's going to be a one, two, three, within this distance here. One, two, three. And then on that third step, I'm planting my pivot foot and I'm turning and driving outside. Now I'm not lowering the hips, leg drive, driving the feet into the ground. Don't sit back, because you'll probably slip and fall. Get your shoulders over your knees. The lower you get your butt, and the more centered you are with your shoulders over your knees and driving your arms, you get low. That's the key, get as low as you can. Get so low you can almost grab grass, okay? So those are the coaching points fundamentally for this. So let's train to the highest level. That's, that's the way I like to train these guys. Don't think that just because they're high school kids, they can't do it, okay? Train them like pros, and they'll be great on a high school field. So let's try it. He'll get it. He might miss it on the first few, but, and I'm not gonna give you any leeway here. Get lower. Stop. There. Stop. There. <laughs> See how low he was? Yeah. That and, and it's made a difference, didn't it? Sure. Now, do you think that there's any high school defensive back that's probably going to be able to cover a guy when he, when he come to a, you know start from a full speed start and run to a dead stop like that in two yards? Okay, so three phases. Remember that. Yeah. Line of scrimmage to first breaking point. First breaking point to catch. Uh -huh catch to touchdown or catch to turn up field is third phase. So break your rod down in three phases like that. Learn how to change directions from a vertical to a horizontal. So the, the cool thing about this drill is, now there are a lot of guys that do a box drill, but more than anything else, it's how you teach the fundamentals of the footwork along with what you do with your arms, your upper body, that is the key to this drill and being able to go from a vertical to a horizontal properly. Say go. Once you teach them how to properly run these points of transition on the box, then they'll start doing the box and you'll know that they're doing it fundamentally correct at every point of transition. If you don't teach them the proper fundamentals, running the box drill means nothing. If you're not teaching your kids how to do everything the right way, then none of these drills mean anything. Matter of fact, it's actually doing them harm because you're teaching them how to do a drill the wrong way. Usually you want to do this drill with at least three kids on that side and three kids on this side and as many as five. I wouldn't do any more than five, five and five. You know, and you're in training camp and you got a bunch of receivers, you can usually get five kids there, five kids here. So the principle of the drill is, is what we're doing in this drill is we're creating hand-eye coordination. All right, so we're kind of uh, bypassing some of the other fundamentals associated with uh, playing receiver, which would be, you know, tucking the ball after every catch. We're just trying to get his eyes and hands to work together so that when I toss it to him, his eyes and his hands are following the ball together. Because that's the key to catching a football. It's forcing them to watch the ball even when they don't get it. We're going to work on a drill today that emphasizes hand positioning on a crossing route. So there are four places which you're typically gonna catch the football if you're running a dig route or any type of a crossing route. Uh, and this can also apply on you know, uh, an out cut or a speed cut away from the quarterback as well as far as where you put your hands because we don't ever wanna fade away from the ball when we're running a crossing route. If he's fading, if he steps behind these cones, he's fading too much. You do not wanna fade on a crossing route. You get a safety in the middle of the field 
and sometimes two, if it's a cover two, waiting to take your head off coming across the field. If you're moving to them because you're fading, you're giving them an easy shot. So we want to be flat coming down the line. Okay. Once the ball's in the air, the route is off. You go to the ball. So if I'm crossing the field and that ball is thrown here and I have to gear down and go back for it, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not just going to keep running. I've seen guys try to snag it with one arm and keep running. Gear down and take your body to the ball for crying out loud. The ball is not going to magically curve and come to you. Okay? So, so I go. Perfect. Good. Brought it back down into the right arm. Got a nice five points of pressure. I can tell you've been taught the right way. That's awesome, Chris. So I go. Good. Good. Okay. That's scoop and roll. It's how to catch the low ball and roll gracefully onto the proper shoulder to minimize injury. Practice that drill, practice it a lot, and you're going to have receivers that get much better being able to catch the low ball on the ground. Thanks for watching myfootballmentor.com.